I hope you guys enjoyed your Thanksgiving weekend like I did. I hope you guys got enough of uh, turkey, mashed potatoes, sweet potato yams, mac and cheese, what have you. And also, I hope you guys knocked out your Black Friday shopping as well, too. Hopefully, you bought what you wanted. And if not, don't worry. The holiday season has approached. It. I'm TJ, and welcome to what we are calling... Uh, the holiday playthrough 2021 and we are doing Sherlock Holmes chapter one now uh, First of all, I know you're wondering uh, I thought you were gonna do it in early December. It's this is a uh, late November Well, you know, I was feeling a little better after uh, what I went through these past few days uh, mainly from uh, the stress of work and all that stuff, but uh, I'm doing pretty well um, some events outside of work have uh, giving me new strength and whatnot, and uh, I got everything knocked out of the ballpark. Um, so we are doing this full playthrough. This will be uh, our last uh, full playthrough of 2021 before we head into before we head into the new year. So let's see what we got going on. Hold on. Okay. Balance, custom, story, balanced. Notifications on. Okay, good. All right, we'll stick with that. Oh, so um, turn all these up. The same sound effects. So uh, uh back to uh, this holiday playthrough. Uh, Sherlock Holmes chapter one. You already one. knew my name and seem aware of my doings here in Cordona. I presume this. Oh, it's the voices. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Uh, I was highlighted voices, then I heard heard uh, what sounded like Sherlock uh, talking over here. So you already knew my name. Make sure the, the, the noise levels okay. But anyways, um, back to what I was saying. Sherlock Holmes Chapter One uh, is uh, developed, and uh, is developed by Frogwares, as you know. Uh, developed. Um, uh, uh, a, a, a batch of uh, Sherlock Holmes games, including Crimes and Punishment. They also developed. Uh, they also developed uh, their last hit, The Sinking City. But what's more interesting about this game is that this is the first game where they published their own product. Uh, so Frogware self-published this title as well too. Uh, uh, previous titles, they had to go through various partners uh, to publish their game through. Um, Excuse me, through uh, through different channels and whatnot. But after the whole fiasco that occurred with the Sinking City and uh, their publishing partner Nacon, with the whole releasing of the Steam and certain uh, copyright violations that they had us uh, go through, uh, they decided to, hey, you know what? Screw it. We're gonna publish our own developed game. And I think that was a smart move on their part. It saves them a lot of money as well too. And I think they're getting a lot of uh, good investments out of this because I've been reading a lot of good stuff about this particular Sherlock Holmes game. They're saying it's a, probably one of the best Sherlock Holmes games since Crimes and Punishment. But we will see as we do this uh, this uh, holiday playthrough. Uh, this is going to be a lengthy one as well, so... Uh, oh, oh, arrest. Okay. Yeah, this is going to be, like I said, this is going to be a lengthy one. This will probably be just as long... I would say the shortest it... In terms of length of how many episodes I'm going to do, um, it'll probably be about at least 12 episodes. That was how long The Sinking City was when we did our full playthrough, or spectacular playthrough, I should say. If not, it could go as long as... It could go just as long as uh, any of the Judgment games that I did. That went from about roughly 17 to 20 episodes. So, from what I'm looking right here, all these... Um, all these uh, hints and notifications and how, how the uh, game is played. This is pretty much the same system as The Sinking City. I just want to see how this is going to play out. If maybe they'll probably address some of the things that they've... I'm um, oh, sorry. That they have... Um, that some of the uh, bugs that were encountered in The Sinking City. So let's see how this plays out. Uh, from what I've read, that this is pretty much the very first Sherlock Holmes storyline, I don't know if it's official or not, before he became the famous detective uh, that resides in Baker Street. So, let's get to it.
But I've also read that there's a lot of emotional depth into this as well too, so let's see how this plays out. Ginger, that's what you need. A mouthful of the good stuff and you'll see the back of any seasickness. Oh, thank you for your support, John. Don't suppose you actually brought any ginger? No, I don't get seasick. Terrific. Don't worry, Sherry. We've almost arrived at Cordona. I can see land through the porthole. So much for docking by tea time. The captain seemed more interested in his maids than in his maps. Oh, he sure looked grumpy. Cheer up. We're back where we grew up. It's exciting. What's changed? What's the same? Ugh. I'm starting to question whether the weeks-long journey was worth it. Traveling all this way, enduring this indignity simply to visit a grave. Even if it is my mother's. Ah, that's just Mycroft's nonsense, still rattling around in your head. Try to forget what he said. I have. I believe it was that this is a performative farce, a feeble excuse to avoid responsibilities, and that there was nothing to be gained from it. You needed to do this. Enough of the self-pity and doubt. So we're a little late. What of it? We'll retire to the hotel and visit her in the morning. It'll be worth it. Thank you, John. And if you want to notify the captain's wife of his indiscretions, I will not stand in your way. Ah, oh, at last. I'm... Quite ready to get off this cursed boat. Come on. We'll go together. Hey, Sherry, come on, catch up. Yes, yes. Sherlock, don't get lost in this huge garden. Follow the sound of my voice. Welcome to Il Palazzo Deluso, sir. If you need something, sir, please inquire at reception. Welcome to Il Palazzo di Lusso, sir. We just need your signature. Did he change accents mid-sentence? Hold on, let's see. Would you kindly sign these papers, sir? There you are. Ah, Mr. Holmes. Uh, yes, we have room 221 prepared for you. I see it was reserved for two people. Uh, would you like a second key? Oh, uh, no, I, I think we'll stick together. Very good. Rooms are upstairs, sir. Welcome to Cordona. Hurry up, Sherlock. I want to see our room. I hope there's a balcony with a view. Your room is upstairs, sir. Number 221. Yeah, what's that number again? Your room is upstairs, sir. Number 221. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay. Let's look around first. Let me talk real quick. Hurry up, Sherlock. I want to see our room. I hope there's a balcony with a view. Well, let me look around first. Oh, that is a nice man. Oh, look at this distinguished gentleman. Look at the way he sits. <laughs> I like those videos. Like that, that, that's um, that quote right there. 
is usually uh, is usually uh, they usually do that on dogs and such. Uh, they look so well mannered sitting on couches and whatnot. Freshly unearthed coffee. Ooh, it lasted for hours, but we're gonna... Oof. Interesting. Maybe a little down and dirty in the coffin. Yeah, I'll talk to the bartender. Would you like a drink, sir? Yes, can I? Would you like a drink, sir? Okay, maybe not. Pardon, monsieur, but I am not in the mood to talk. I see, I'll leave you alone. You're good. That's a nice cane. What is that, a cane? That looks pretty clean. What is that? Probably no more later on. Let's see. Oh, hey, hello. Oh, I remember this button. Oh, that's cool. You can identify who to talk with. Even better. Can I run? What's this? Oh, okay, get to identify a Wel Welsh cook, he's from, okay, apple bowl. Uh, you need water, dude. You want me to cover you? Let's see, did you want to I don't need Peter. Yeah, I believe her. Nice. Sympathetic. Okay, she just got here, and okay, okay, okay. Let's see what else we got. What about the, the other lady? Oh, she's police snitch. <laughs> oh my. Okay, watch out for her. Let me see about her. Oh, I don't think I saw her. Single. Okay. Good, multiple saves. Let me play one. Oh, even better. Okay. All right. So that's a first. I remember in um, the Sinking City, we didn't have multiple saves, but I guess that was one of the things that Frog Wars addressed. Good. Let's see. Let's see what else. Oh, oh. let's see how big this map is. Okay, so this is about the same size as the Sinking City. Okay. Oh yeah, there's a lot of places to go to here. Okay. Okay, okay. No, I know. Oh yeah, I forgot. Oh, there we go, R2. Okay. Okay. I got the re re some of the recycling, or recycled some of the elements here. Let's see what else. So, from what I gathered, this uh, the island of Cardona, this looks like a some sort of vacation-like island resort of some sort. <laughs> Let me talk to her on the right side. I wonder how Sherlock is able to identify these traits just by observing them. Pretty cool. I wish I had a trait like that. Well, I kind of do have a trait like that, but uh, let's see. 
Are you from Kenya? Nice. Oh, you're bored. Mm. Why don't you do some cartilage? You got a lot of space behind that bar. Social anxiety. Why don't you conversing with them? It's with seaweed? French, that makes sense. Okay. <laughs> Alright. Let's see what else. Hey. Is that B? Oh, never mind. Let's look into the geography of that one. Oof. No problems. So I'm really interested in just reading uh, each character's traits over here. All these NPCs got me really intrigued with how they are. Southpaw. Ooh, she must be a fighter. <laughs> hmm. Slow down the caffeine lady. Oh, I can't mess with these guys. Afraid of heights? What are you doing up here? What the heck? Southpaw so far. Woo! Need a lot, man. Get some energy. The scaling fish is really, really tough. I mean, I remember seeing um, an episode of Master Chef and uh, Gordon Ramsay was showing the, the contestants how to descale fish properly. Man, that man did it like. I mean, considering he's been in the field for what, over, over a lengthy time period, he, that man did in like two seconds. Oh, it's thief. Alright, let's see what else we got. Taking man. Those are the sharp eyes of a man with a bright mind. Almost like mine. Two people with overbite so far. So Russ, ooh, yeah, yeah, that's serious. Okay. Packed. 
That's right, I mean, the Mediterranean is right. I know where that is, okay. Can we go here? Hey, I'm relieving you. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Alright, let's go. I don't think I've observed, observed, eh, I've observed enough. I like that. Hurry up, Sherlock. I want to see our room. I hope there's a balcony with a view. So that's 227. Alright. Oh, uh, maybe it's that one guy that was standing in front of the door home. This place incredibly dull, don't you think? There we go. Looks like they have our luggages up here too. Who's this guy? Let's see if that looks like her face. I apologize, sir, but your room is not yet ready. Perhaps in the meantime you would like to relax in the foyer? Tonight the restaurant is offering a complimentary Marlin ceviche to all our guests. Let's check what they have on offer. Let's check what they have on offer. Mm -hmm. If seafood's not to your taste, everyone loves Benedict's Batch. Our poached eggs with hollandaise sauce. Yeah, that was a good hey, Sherry. hey Sherry, just start luck. If seafood's not to your taste, everyone loves Benedict's Batch. Our poached eggs with hollandaise sauce. A medium, John, haven't we been through this already? Come on, it's not like we've got anything better to do. Excuse me, sir, but I believe Mr. Galich is conducting a seance at the moment. Perhaps you'd care to have your portrait drawn while you wait? Why? Pardon me. Why should I sit for a portrait? I... Sir, it's art. It doesn't need a why. It is its own justification. All things require justification, be they objects, systems, or beliefs. How about art as the lens through which we see the truth of the world? That's backward. Truth is not subjective and not complicated. It's just the truth. It either is or it isn't. You do not need a lens to see it, just an open mind. Ha! Huh. That seems rather close-minded. Truth, like beauty, is in the eye of the beholder. So tell me, what do you see? Mediocrity. Come now, Sherry. What did he do to deserve that? The servant mentioned ceviche at the bar, Sherry. You should grab us some, and I'll find us a table. I'm starving. Yeah, let's see. Okay, okay time to time check to if John, John found us a nice table for the evening. If seafood's not to your taste, everyone loves Benedict's Batch. Our poached eggs with hollandaise sauce. Sherry, I'm over here with my new ursine companion. Cordon is even quieter than I remembered. It's going to be a long evening. Ah, oh, come now, Sherry. 
What say we amuse ourselves with a little game? What were you thinking? Oh, promise me it isn't nonsense. After being cooped up on that boat, I am itching for activity. No. As you can see, someone left a cane on our table. I simply thought you could identify its owner. Ah, so it is nonsense. It'll take me a minute, John, at most. Well, then, you can deliver it to him as well. Deliver it to him? <laughs> then what are the staff here for? Aesthetics? Oh, stubborn, Sherry. Too stubborn. You wanted something to do. Slapping oneself in the face is also something to do. That doesn't make it worthwhile. But all right. Let me take a look. Uh, let's see what we got here. The hand grip is a head of a golden Javanese statue, probably stolen from a temple. The dents suggest it has been used as a bludgeon. Hmm. I'm taking some out there. A crest right. depicting a bulb of garlic in a meadow. Perhaps the Fielding family or meadows. Or craven from the old English name meaning garlic place. The cane is made of ebony, it's worn uncared for, and bears the scars of numerous hits. This cane is an expensive and ostentatious weapon. Its owner must be vain, volatile, and of noble English blood. Take it with you, Sherry. Let's return it to its owner. All right, I hope you noted down your observations in your casebook. But how are you going to find this nobleman? The cane itself is not enough. I may have to ask other guests if they saw who was here. Pardon, monsieur, but I am not in the mood to talk. Excuse me, just one question. That's a question I can answer. Well, even with your keen senses, Sherry, I doubt you'll find the cane's owner on your first try. Huh. And would you be confident enough to bet on it, my friend? Why not? Let's see how good you really are. May I ask for your assistance? I have nothing to hide, sir, but I've never heard of this.
May I ask you something? My dear fellow, you're talking to the right man. Sherry, don't we now have the perfect excuse to visit the seance? I'm just going to give the cane to its owner. You will not persuade me to take part in this show. I didn't see the owner, Sherry, so I can't help you find him. Room. Is it the one upstairs behind that door? <laughs> Are you able to help me? I have nothing to hide, sir, but I've never heard of this. Come on, if you hurry, perhaps we'll see the ghost. This hotel, this island, it's full of thieves! First my cane, now the diamond. Take your hands off me! Do you even know who I am? Hey boy! That's my cane! I get that a lot, it's a very common design. What? No, that's a custom made! A joke. A joke. It was left at my table in the restaurant. I thought it deserved to be returned. Well, I'll be... It is rare to encounter a straight-fingered true penny these days. What a gentleman. But I must ask, how did you know I was the rightful owner? Swollen reddish skin. The tie? Oh, the suit. Hmm. Is that a ring? Oh, the same. That's the same insignia as the one on the cane. <laughs> hmm. I don't, I don't know if he's bored. This is tough. I like this. Rich and fashionable. There's money. He's a bored Britishman because him having rich, like expensive clothes is what's given it away. Hmm. Yeah, I th well, bored rich or bored British man, and he's squandering his money. And yeah, I think that clothes gives it away. It doesn't say anything about about him being rich I mean a theft by a diamond but what's he gonna do with that what's he gonna do with the diamond anyway if he's single 
I'm gonna go with this. Yeah, you did that. Okay. All right. Well, let's just give it a chance. Simple deduction. Your cane told me everything I needed to know. I was after a strong middle-aged man with a keen interest in adventure, noble blood, and affection for strong drink. And if one were to go further, one may even be able to extrapolate your name from your heraldic symbol, Lord Craven. Marvelous. Simply marvelous. That's me, Lord Andrew Craven. You are the real medium. You hear that, Emma? Well, you found my cane. Perhaps you can locate my diamond, too. Yes, you should do it. It will be child's play for you, Mr... Holmes. And if a child can do it, then I'm sure the local police can suffice. The police? Why bother? I know this Harlequin stole it. The only question is, where is it hidden? Fine. Give me my stick and I'll resolve the matter myself. This thief almost confessed after a single punch. Hmm. I suspect a beating may result in answers of questionable veracity. Fine. I shall spare you and he the trouble if you first answer me this. You insist the medium robbed you during the seance. But what occurred exactly? Ah! It was a dirty trick. We were sitting here in the dark, chanting and holding hands, as expected. Then something began to appear from the medium, like a, a cloud or a bubble. The swindler called it ectoplasm. Ah, yes. Common in the spiritualist trade, and quite the spectacle. Indeed. Perhaps too much. My beloved Emma screamed in horror, and I stood to defend her, attacking that cursed ghost. How brave. But my hand hit nothing. The medium jumped away from me, and Emma fainted. I lit the candle, and the diamond was gone. How does a priceless diamond become the subject of a seance? It is an unusual accoutrement. Emma wished to speak with its former owners. My grandfather told us it belonged to a Raja, an Indian king. So you were summoning long-dead Indian royalty, and, pray tell, you were expecting him to converse in English? To be frank, Mr. Holmes, I don't believe in ghosts. But Emma was fascinated by the idea of meeting a real king, even a dead one. Well, a crown is a crown. Can you describe the stone itself? A yellow diamond, not less than a hundred carats, and perfectly egg-shaped. There is not another like it. Stay here, and don't touch anything. I'm going to investigate further. Don't fret, I'll be keeping a close eye on this thief. Ugh, I wonder how long it takes to recharge it, though. Find the stone, Mr. Holmes, and quickly! Ooh, I love the ambiance. Nice and creepy. Thank you for helping us resolve the situation, sir. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> what happened here? I don't know. The ghost. I summoned it as usual, but then it all went wrong. The lady screamed and pointed at Lord Craven. And there was a shadow. Such a mystical force. It terrified the lady. And it must have taken the diamond. Who else could have? Do you feel the presence of any supernatural entities at the moment? Are you joking, sir? My nose is broken, this maniac wants to kill me, and you're asking about the spirits? I suppose this can wait. I will investigate, and the culprit will be identified. But this stubborn brute Lord Craven blames me right now. As if I could do something like that. Uh, perhaps you can reason with him? Please? Was this covered on purpose? Of course. It is very dangerous to leave a mirror exposed during a seance. The spirits may become enraged. Or someone may notice the trick they should not see. I wonder what this mirror could have witnessed. I wonder what this mirror could have witnessed. I don't want to pull that off, but I will. Quite a display for the tremulous visitor. How can you not love this stuff, Sherry? 
It adds so much atmosphere to the room. Pale skin, quickened pulse, unsteady breathing. She's barely conscious. A feebleness of women. Really, Sherry? Poor thing. This hefty chair has nearly broken after hitting the wall. Could one man even lift it? At Cambridge, I was captain of the rugby team. It was no place for weaklings. Mind Palace is the same as the Sinking City, where you get to uh, 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 try to put some clues together in the mixer and deductions. Let's see what we got here. The diamond was placed on the table so that all participants could reach it. One hundred four carat. God damn! It's all money. There are light traces of rouge on the edge of this wine glass. This must be the ectoplasm. Too bad there's not enough for a proper chemical analysis. Ectoplasm? The ghost was here, Sherry. Half a glass of Balblair scotch and the remains of a Paul Aranaga cigar. What else does a gentleman need? This brooch is old and cheap, but the moth design has its charms. Ah, seems like you're ready to delve into your mind palace, Shep. It seems there may have been an unexpected visitor outside the window. Ah, oh, I hope it was the ghost of the Raja.
I didn't take the diamond, I swear. Thank you for helping us resolve the situation, sir. She was, she, or she was saying she was playing up the window. Let's see. Let's look outside the window. This looks recent. A shoe with a broken heel will surely leave scratches. All right, John. Do you think a ghost could leave this footprint? I'm reserving judgment. Use your keen eye to follow the trail. Ghost hunting? This case gets more exciting by the minute. Size four with a broken heel. Size four with a broken heel. Rose de Moore. All the maids in the hotel wear this exact shoe. So, so definitely, definitely not the ghost of a Raja. Unless... <sighs> no, what a shame. Our witness was a nosy maid. Hmm. Searching the entire hotel could be difficult. Perhaps the other maids can help us find her. This reminds me of the fairy tale, Sherry. Will you find your princess? May I ask you something? You look like an honorable man. I have some information for you. Excuse me, just one question. Oh, I'm sorry, but that's beyond my knowledge. Oh, well, I tried. I saw me cleaning near the pictures, was it right here? There, might be it. Oh, they cleared the van, okay. This painting looks authentic, but it's just a talented imitation. Says for me. Finally, there you are. One would think a maid would be easy to find in this place. I'm, I'm sorry, sir. Do you need more towels? No, no. You are the maid who saw the ghost in the seance room, yes? How did you know? Simple. You changed shoes after breaking a heel while fleeing the scene. I'm sorry, sir, but if I may ask, who are you? I don't know if I should give myself away. A precious diamond was stolen during the seance. 
Lord Craven entrusted me with its recovery. I'm, I'm sorry, sir, but we are forbidden to discuss the private matters of our guests. Hmm. Are you also forbidden from peeking into private rooms, Miss... Saletta. Lucia Saletta, sir. Tell me, Miss Saletta, what would your manager say if he knew you were spying on guests? I... Oh, please, sir, don't tell him. I have a family. I need this work. I won't, but only if you answer my questions truthfully. And don't play coy. I can tell. Describe what happened during the seance. Um, a lady and two gentlemen were sitting at a table, touching their hands to something. The medium started to whisper and, and chant, and a ghost appeared. A ghost? You're confident? Hmm? It was unearthly, sir. It grew from the medium's chest. A glowing cloud or a, a bubble. I pressed closer against the window to see better. And the lady saw you? How did you... Yes. She screamed and pointed, so I hurried to escape, and I broke my heel. But I did see the ghost. A sickly, evil thing. And that's all you can tell me? Did you see any of what happened next? <laughs> the, the medium, Mr. Galici. He was doing something with the ghost. He grabbed at it like he was trying to catch it. <laughs> and then I ran. I suppose I should be grateful you endured these horrors for such a long time. All right. I have your account memorized. Good day. Oh, you scared the poor girl, Sherry. Did she really deserve that? We all got what we wanted. She talked. I stay silent. Oh, let's get back to the crime scene. I always love seeing you explain simple things to simpletons. The ghost. Oh, sir. I remember it forever. Lady Craven retired to her room to rest. Lord Craven remained here until the staff reported that the medium was locked in his room. I don't know how much time walks around left and right. I wish you could just pause instead of being ping everywhere else. If I'm not mistaken, I have to go through each of these nodes, and then after interacting with them, I have to select them in the correct order, just like the Singing City. Or something? <laughs> what is that? I really like to know what this mirror is. I see it. I know what to do now.
Because I would think whatever this mirror was right here, that had to reflect off of the median right over here. The median might have reflected something off of there. I mean, that's the only angle I can think of. And let me go outside. That might be it. Hold on. Let me see if this works. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. Maybe I have to switch these two? It all began when the lady screamed and pointed at the window. Lord Craven jumped up, ready to face anything, ghost or human. The medium shrank back in dismay. He was not expecting such a reaction and had to quickly hide the ghost. The lady was the only one left touching the diamond, at least until she fainted. Amazing! It's like you saw it with your own eyes, sir. Oh, I forgot that you were here. I guess I should discuss all of this with Lady Craven. The Cravens are upstairs in room 226. It is one of our finest suites. If the lady was touching a diamond, then she would have felt the ghost take it. What do you think it felt like, Sherry? A jellyfish? The Cravens are upstairs in room 226. It is one of our finest suites. 226, that's one of the first suites I encountered up in the main lobby. Are you able to help me? Apologies, sir, but I've never heard of it. It's on this side. Are these ladies eavesdropping? What's going on here? Lady Craven is not who she seems. Remember her behavior in the hall? Lady Craven is not who she seems. Lady Craven is not who she seems.
You're here, at last. I didn't do that. I swear, I found her this way. Well, I did have some questions for her, but it seems I've arrived too late. Now it's a matter for the police. Mr. Holmes, you said it yourself. They're children. They'll only make things worse. You, you promised me you would investigate. Investigate a theft, not a murder. Fear not. I will tell them all I've uncovered. Please, help me. The police will surely accuse me of Emma's death. You were the only one who can find the truth. Fine, but only because it's slightly more interesting than the walls of my room. Tell me what happened. Look, after you left, I waited in the seance room until the servants locked up Mr. Galici the medium. And was your mistress there too? Oh, so you... you know? I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. Uh, regardless, the staff took Emma to her room. She was still feeling dizzy. So you didn't follow her. Interesting. Where did you go instead? To the bar. It had been almost an hour. I see. And how long did you stay? I partook of a well-earned whiskey or two before retiring upstairs. Ask anyone there. Is Mr. Galici still being held? And where did the servants secure him? He's in room 225. But that pigeon-livered man at the reception desk refused to give me the key. Well, I will have to visit reception myself then. Perhaps he will listen to reason. Now we arrive at the tragedy at hand. So what transpired after your detour to the bar? I headed up to my room to find Emma on the bed. I didn't pay her much attention at first. I was still preoccupied with that damned medium. But when I realized she was silent, I drew closer and discovered she was dead. What's more, the diamond lay right there beside her. Oh, well, that is splendid news. Splendid? The return of the diamond will be cold comfort if I live out my days in a jail cell. You must help me. Let me see what I can find. Barely an hour has passed, and you already have yourself a murder mystery, Sherlock. Why am I not surprised? This must be the missing diamond. A tremendous specimen, now forever tainted. Strangled with bare hands, judging by the bruises. Everything was tipped out of the bed as if it was searched. I think she stole the stone. It's certainly possible, but we won't get her confession now. Well, there is a professional medium right next door. Aha, uh -huh. a neat hiding place. Why would she conceal all of this? Several thousand pounds, that's quite a fortune. Fard Rouge, Calomel Mascara, a real altar of beauty for the traveling temptress.
Hmm. This ring looks out of place among the others, and the design is familiar. It looks like the same brooch. The moth pin. Virtuous. Adductor Sapit. Hmm. Virtus or Dactor Sapit. Courage tastes bold. A unique family motto. The mystery deepens. A victim with a checkered past and poor taste. A remarkably simple lock. I am needed elsewhere. What is that all about? Someone was not happy with his post. Give me the key to Luca Galici's room. I need to talk to him about the events of the seance. 
I suppose you are an impartial outsider. All right, but please do not give it to Lord Craven. We do not want to see our reputation damaged further. Awkward. They still don't know what a nasty surprise awaits upstairs. Hush. No need to cause another ruckus. The last thing we want is the police to come meddling. Let me see before I make any other moves. Oh, quick. Talk with some of the bartender real quick. Sorry. Maybe a guest noticed him. Sorry. Maybe a guest noticed him. Do you know anything about this? That's a question I can answer. So young and so dead. Another mystery to investigate, my friend. I'm afraid I can wait no longer to hear your account of the seance, Mr. Galici. So please, tell me what you saw. Lady Craven wanted to meet the spirit of the Raja. My conjuration was successful. Perhaps even too successful. I am sure this spirit was the only one who could have taken the diamond. Lord Craven needs to leave me alone. Do you think the police will believe you? Of course. I didn't take anything. And spiritual phenomena are beyond their control. 
Or should I summon the ghost again so they may attempt to handcuff it? I think I would prefer to begin my investigation in the physical realm. I don't know about the makeup that had the trace of illness from the nourishment. I don't think I think I think that's more of a trait than an actual condition. Anybody can be skinny, but that doesn't mean you're technically malnourished. I have shocking news that changes your situation entirely. Oh, no, wait. What am I thinking? The spirits will have told you this already. I, I am not in the necessary state for summoning. The spirits prefer clarity of mind and soul. Please, tell me. Lady Craven died in the very next room while you were in here. Did you not hear anything? What? How? I in fact, I did hear noises. That Craven is a very loud man, but I never thought he would do that to his wife. Well, you claim to be a medium. Perhaps you could ask her spirit why. What? No, it's uh, too dangerous. Oh well, at least I can make the dead talk. Those scratches on your hands look rather painful. What happened to you? It was those savage servants. They were so rough bringing me here as if I was trying to escape. When I'm free, I'll demand compensation. I need to go. Those scratches look pretty fresh. It's like, remember, she... Go back. You always take me to the best of places, Sherry. Do you always travel with your books, Mr. Galici? I do. In my line of work, one needs resources available to help deal with the unpredictable and unworldly. A familiar substance. It's the ectoplasm that stained the seance table, but this time, there's enough for analysis.
tools and accessories for masterful prestidigitation. Or, or weapons and defences against visitors from the great beyond. Hmm, someone is making the most of his stay. Can you blame the man? I'd say he's not ordering enough. Get to the point, Mr. Holmes. Do you recognize this ring? Should I? That's a third-rate piece if ever I've seen one. I'd never buy something like this. Did you ever see Miss Emma wearing it? No. And why should she? I gave her enough jewelry that she could wear a superior ring every day of the week. I found these jewels secreted away. Are you familiar with them? Ah! It cannot be so! That deceptive wagtail. How could she do this? That sounds like a yes. These items were supposedly stolen from us during our trip. I must have spent hours reporting it all to the police. And it turns out she had them all along. The trollop. I'd kill her myself were she not dead already. Do something about it, Holmes. I... I did not do it. You know that. What is this?
Oh, I'm trying to understand this thing. Let's click on I think that matches. Let's see. Score. My faith in this medium has burst, just like a rubber balloon. So it wasn't. It wasn't real crap. Sorry, that's beyond my expertise. This object simply isn't resonating with me. The spirits are silent, and so am I. That's a remarkable pin of yours, Mr. Galici. Does it have any meaning? The butterfly? It's a reminder of a time in which I was truly happy. What a coincidence. Lady Craven had a ring with the same design. A coincidence indeed. <laughs> I suspect it is a common theme in jewelry. Bullshit. This object simply isn't resonating with me. This object simply isn't resonating with me. Sorry, that's beyond my expertise. Do you realize just how dangerous it is to hold phosphorus in the mouth? I beg your pardon? I'll bet it makes your rubber balloons glow impressively in the dark, but you'll regret it when the hypertension and vomiting sets in. You mock my talent, sir. You shouldn't be so flippant about things beyond your earthly understanding. How ignorant one must be to compare a spirit's ectoplasm with... balloons. It was merely a word of caution. We both know how match factory workers look after several years on the job. I need to go. I am needed elsewhere.
Luca Galici, I know you murdered Lady Craven, and I can prove it. That would be a grand story for the newspapers. But where's your proof? I was locked in here and could not hurt a fly. Yes, yes, the locked room. Good of you to mention it. I inspected the door between the rooms, and the lock on it is piteous. You could open it with a penknife. So I am now a burglar, as well as a thief and a murderer? As for the motive, it's obvious that you deduced that Lady Craven was the real thief. Of course, it helped that this was not your first encounter with Miss Emma. Uh, I am... Uh... <laughs> I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. How on earth can you believe this? I think the police will easily find the proof when they browse their archives. Your wrists are bloodied, and there's no way a servant's manhandling could cause such an injury. It was Lady Craven as you strangled her. You are... You are fantasizing, Mr. Holmes. It is done, Luca. You will be arrested. Your best strategy now is to confess and hope your reasons were justified. I... Uh, I... Ha. I don't know how you figured it out. But yes. I killed her. I had to. This woman could not get away with ruining my life twice. Twice? I knew Emma before she was a lady. I mean, she pretended to be noble back then too. But only so our gang, the Moths, could steal from those snobs. She betrayed us stole all our money and disappeared, leaving us to rot in jail. I was young. I spent three years in that hell. And tonight, she tried to set you up again. Did she recognize you? She didn't. I came to her afterwards, pleading that she drop this farce, but she laughed in my face. I just remembered my time in the clink, all I suffered while she indulged. Then I grabbed her throat. Murdered somebody. Uh, I'm not gonna let that slide. Murder is murder, Luca. You could have told Lord Craven the truth and seen Miss Emma's downfall, but you could not restrain yourself. He would never believe me. We will never know. Still, perhaps a jury will be more easily swayed. If not, You'll get to see your friends in jail again soon. We'll meet again, Holmes. I will get you, in this life or the next. Get your hands off me. He murdered the woman who put him in jail. Should we be worried? Fear not, John. Unlike Miss Emma, I will see him coming. That, that's a bit of a low-blow statement. That was too much fun, Sherry. I'm buzzing. Buzzing. Wasn't it fun? A woman died, John. I was too slow to the truth, too hesitant to intervene. How can you... Oh, lighten up. Those people made their choices. If you swan about with a diamond in your pocket, that's what happens. Wealth is a weakness, so we must blame those who covet it. With enough money on the line, Sherlock, a man will do just about anything. Even murder. And then we get to solve it. I suspect you perhaps cannot grasp the true horrors of mortality, John. Oi, I am aware of my perilous existence, thank you very much. Hmm. I must admit, even if the outcome of the adventure was imperfect, there was some pleasure to be had in the puzzle. Well, Cordona seems more depraved and decadent than we thought. I bet you'll get another chance. A bet, you say? A uh, figure of speech. Just a figure of speech. Ah, damn. Well... Take one last look at the view, then we must be off. It's time to do what we came here for.
Oh, so he is his imaginary friend, okay. Which explains why he moves around a lot. Sherry, I forbid you to spend another night here. The hotel's reputation won't survive a second investigation. Hmm, yeah, let's go, it's nice. A free ride for every hotel visitor. Just tell me where to go. Is everything all right? If you don't feel up to it, I won't tell anyone. It's just a goodbye, John. It won't be difficult. I've already come to terms with my mother's passing. Hmm. So you really don't remember? To what do you refer? The funeral. Sherlock, you were distraught. At first, I thought this visit would dredge up those feelings, but you've been remarkably level. John, I think I was too young to understand. I couldn't fathom why she would leave me. Perhaps that pain is best left forgotten. On the contrary, it's why I'm visiting her grave. To remember her. you wanted to remember Sherry. Concentrate and I'm sure it will come back to you. Mycroft was adamant that we leave for London immediately after the funeral. He never told me why but I saw how unsettled he was by the long requiem. Don't mind me, sir. I'm just a loyal servant of my crops. I thought you wanted to remember, Sherry. Concentrate, and I'm sure it will come back to you. The service was sparsely attended. Though my parents were buried separately, the pastor said they're united in heaven. I didn't believe him even then. I wanted to see her one last time before the coffin was interred and say how I loved her. The chance never came. I, I feel I rather faint. You're fine, you're fine. It's over now. You remembered everything. It will get easier soon. familiar, John. 
Why is it here? Okay, so John's done his imaginary friend. Rest in peace, Violet Holmes. Goodbye, Mother. This watch was a gift. My mother's initials are engraved on it. The piece is in good condition. It must have been placed here only recently. A candle in a small puddle of wax. It cannot have been lit for more than half an hour. Is this really how you want to spend this time? This is my mother's pocket watch, John. Who put it here and why? Are you not in the slightest bit interested? A man in fashionable shoes stood near the tomb. The size of the prince suggests he is approximately five and a half feet tall. You were about to tell me the make and model of tire, but let me assure you, I do not care. Hmm. Ah, well, it was going to be very impressive. Come on then, the trail continues ahead. Bicycles. You know, that type of bicycle reminds me of uh, Jackass number two, and uh, <laughs> there was a skit where they were riding these bicycles, uh, Johnny Knoxville and the late Ryan Dunn. And Ryan was uh, asking, why would anybody ride this shit? It doesn't make any sense. Oh, the bike's here. <laughs> He mustn't be far away to leave it unattended. A portable easel was kept there. <sighs> the hospital equipped. If memory serves, they're located at the far end of the cemetery around an old tree. I hope that inspiration strikes upon visiting these beautiful vaults. At the very least, you'll enjoy the view. Yours, Mercuria. It's stained with oil paint. An artist working in a cemetery? Do you think he'd paint my portrait? So now we're searching for the artist. He must be nearby. Don't mind me, sir. I'm just a loyal servant of my craft. Excuse me, just one question. There is no amount of money that would make me talk. Can I ask you a question? A man like you should not speak to a man like me. 
Time to check your who, what and what, Sherry. Who are you asking about what and dressed as what? that ridiculous artist from the hotel. Be nice, Sherry. Make friends. Mr. Holmes, did you come for another portrait? <laughs> no, no, I jest. You gave quite the performance last night. The hotel was abuzz with your name. I must say I was rather absorbed in it all. The fallibility of men. Such scandal. It was a welcome distraction. Oh, my manners. I am Werner Vogel, art enthusiast and gallery proprietor. Mr. Vogel, I was perhaps too curt when last we spoke. Speak no more of it. Travel takes it out of any man, never mind when this is your destination. Once I learned who you were, the pieces fell into place. Your mother was well liked on Cadona in her time here. I was sorry to hear of her passing. Does your gallery feature more than just portraiture? Oh, of course. We display landscapes, sculpture, modern pieces, too. I am sure we have something that will move you. You must stop by. Only music moves me, I'm afraid. Then you have simply not found your artist yet. Someone whose work hits you in your core. You're still young. I am sure we'll find them. How did you come to possess my mother's pocket watch? Oh my! It is quite something to witness those powers of deduction firsthand. Yes, I... I left you her timepiece. After her death, there was an estate sale. All of Cordona's elite picking of her remains. I couldn't let such a lovely thing go to those vultures. When I learned your name, I could no longer keep the watch in good conscience. It is yours by right, and I knew you'd find it here. Thank you. I'd forgotten all about it, but the moment I saw it, I knew it was hers. Amazing what the young mind forgets and the older can recall. Rather odd, loitering in a cemetery. I suspect you'll win, but I'm here for my art. There's beauty everywhere if you look, even in decay. A little darkness brings out the light. Now, a diligent observer might note that you too are loitering in a cemetery. What brings you here? Closure? Answers? Penance? Closure, I suppose. And what is closure? Mere proximity? Understanding. Acceptance. You didn't understand from afar. You had to come here to accept the truth of her death? Of course I understand. She died of consumption, drowning in her own blood. Your mother? Yes, my mother. Hmm. I must have been misinformed. I'd heard otherwise. Otherwise than consumption? No, no. You'd know better than I. I'd heard talk of a police investigation, but Cordona is a notorious gossip. Now what does it matter? She's passed on either way. She has. Well, I shall intrude no longer. I'll leave you to your closure. Do stop by the gallery if your travels permit. Farewell. Are you all right, Sherry? Take as long as you need. Hmm. Whatever I need, it isn't here. We should explore Cordona. Perhaps there are archives that may shed further light. He's odd, Sherry. Even odder than I.
Do you know anything about this? Your money doesn't impress me. Could you help me? Doesn't remind me of anything. Someone else can help better, sir. This isn't working. You might need a different tack. Can you satisfy my curiosity? My family is starving because of people like you. Go away. Yeah, shut up. Let's explore a bit as we head towards Cardona Police Station. Let's call it an episode of this. I think I know where to go. Is this familiar to you? You shouldn't have left your mansion. You won't get any answers from me.
Help me, please. Doesn't remind me of anything. Someone else can help better, sir. What's up? Help me, please. I'd tell you if I knew, but unfortunately, I don't. Are you able to help me? A solid question, sir, but I don't have the answer. You obviously haven't thought this all through. Or are you just annoying these people on purpose? I'm just purposely annoying them. Alright, perfect. So, we're gonna call it an episode here. I'm really liking what's going on in this game so far. But we just solved our first case in the, uh, the main campaign. And now, after talking with the uh, artist, which turned out to be for her mobile we encountered in the hotel earlier in this game. Seems to know more about uh, how the police are involved, or how the police investigation is going on with them. Sherlock's uh, mother's death. So, we're gonna continue on in the next episode shortly. Uh, we're gonna just try to see if there's any side cases available once we go inside the police station and continue on with the main story. Alright, guys, thanks for joining me on this first of many episodes of the whole holiday plate of Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1. I will see you then.